Hey guys, it's been almost 10 months since I was on here and I feel like it's time to come back and start making videos again for multiple reasons, but the biggest one being that I really enjoy making videos and I, I really enjoy and I'm super grateful for this community. The reason that I stepped away almost 10 months ago was because we found out that my wife was diagnosed with terminal cancer and she ended up passing away a little over three months ago. And so in this video, I really just wanted to tell her story. And the reason I wanted to tell her story is we decided very early on that we were going to share her battle and what we had really hoped would be a different finish to this battle. But the reason I wanted to make this video is because there are so many extraordinary moments and extraordinary things that she went through and things that we learned that I feel like I want shared um, for multiple reasons. One, because I think that her story deserves to be shared, but two, because before we had her original diagnosis almost two years ago, or maybe I guess now at this point over two years ago, we just had no idea the impact that cancer could have on us. We had no idea that as healthy people in our 20s that we could face anything like this with two young kids and just at that point in our life it just seemed so off the radar and when we did end up getting her original colon cancer diagnosis and then working through that and then getting her terminal diagnosis there are so many things we didn't know that we wish that we did and so many things that we learned through the process that I know other people are just right now probably in the same situation in the future will be in the same situation really hoping that someone else has been there that can give them some form of hope and information and so that's why I decided to make this video and I feel like the only way that I can share everything that I want to properly is just to start from the beginning of our experience so what's now over two years ago Maddie was healthy, she was training for a triathlon, and she was having blood in her stool and some different cramping pains in her abdomen. So we originally went into the doctor and they told us just to not worry about it, um, that it was probably a fiber issue and that it wasn't a big stress. Well, we just didn't feel good about that answer, so we went to another doctor. We ended up having Maddie go and get a colonoscopy, and this was just days after she went and had run her first triathlon. She was so healthy, she trained hard, and even though she was dealing with these pains, she really seemed like a very healthy, you know, everything was great person. We got the results back from the colonoscopy and they told us that they thought that it was colon cancer, but they couldn't be sure until we went in and had the portion where she had the tumor removed. So we didn't put a lot of research in, we just rushed. We trusted the professionals, we found a surgeon, we got in and um, within weeks, we had her in to have this portion of her colon removed to then see one, confirm that it was colon cancer, even though that's what they thought it was, and two, see how bad it was, how much it had gone into the lymph nodes and out of just her, her colon to determine the staging. They went in and they ended up removing a foot of her colon and over 20 lymph nodes and told us that it was late stage three colon cancer. This was horrible news, devastating news, and it came just weeks after my brother had been diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma. And so we were so, so confused, so frustrated, so sad, and it was just hard to make sense of how both my brother and Maddie at their young age um, could receive these cancer diagnosis. So at this point we were told that the five-year survival rate for Maddie was a little under 70% with her staging and her cancer. And when we heard these numbers we were very confident. Um, obviously we were devastated, we were scared, we went through every range of emotions, but we just felt like she had been exceptional in every aspect of her life and that that would have to give her a benefit when it came to her odds with this cancer. We were told that that 70% was only if we did chemotherapy and the surgery that we did. And so 
Um, we'd already done the surgery. She recovered for a month. The one other part I wanted to share with that surgery, just so you kind of get a, a full picture of everything we went through, is she had multiple allergic reactions to the chloroprep they put on her skin that lasted four weeks. So her whole body was covered in a rash. She was dealing with the pain of recovery. It was just one thing after another, right on the heel of this horrible news. And then we were told to start chemotherapy, I think it was four or five weeks after getting the surgery. So after the surgery, allergic reaction, just really mentally, physically, all of these horrible things, we jumped right into chemotherapy. At this time, both my brother and Maddie were going through chemo. And so our family was just in a rough place and all around devastated by the news. Chemo was hard. She had to deal with a lot of cold sensitivity. She had to deal with all of the exhaustion, the pain, um, and all of the other, you know, skin issues that come with chemo, bodily pain, stomach, bowel issues, just, everything across the board going through chemo. And through this experience, she was absolutely exceptional. She worked so hard to every day show up for our kids. And even though she was tired, even though she was in pain, she just consistently showed up. She consistently stayed hopeful and positive. She was so kind to where every person we interacted with, every doctor, every nurse would comment on, man, we have a lot of people through, but you're just so good and kind and positive and grateful. And she held to that all through her chemotherapy. And then we were done. It seemed like such a long, painful process, but before we knew it, we had finished chemo. At this point, I made the decision to really step back from work um, I stepped out of the company Aptiv that I had worked for for 11 years at that point. I backed off on YouTube. I started doing a lot less videos. I backed off from real estate and all of the endeavors we'd kind of taken on and we um, were just finishing our dream home. It really felt like we'd done it and we'd made it through. We spent time hiking and boating and time with the kids and I had extra time and we just felt like I don't know, we'd been given this blessing of another shot at life and we really took advantage of it for months. It was over six months um, that we just were living and it was fantastic. We boated a lot. We had so many incredible experiences and I'm so grateful for that time. We were just about to move into our new house and Maddie got blood work done that she was getting regularly every couple months and the blood work showed that they thought the cancer was coming back. So then we were given this news of, hey, you know, you've had all of this great healthy life um, the last six months. Maddie also ran the same triathlon again one year later and beat her time. It, just everything was going so good. But then just weeks before we're moving into the dream home we'd worked on for the last three years together while going through all of this, um, Maddie was told that the cancer was coming back. And again, she stayed so positive and so hopeful that it'll come back. We'll do chemo again. We'll take on whatever we need to. We'll do whatever we need to, but we're gonna beat this. And it didn't mean we didn't cry a lot and we weren't sad and we weren't stressed and we weren't mad, but she worked so hard to keep us present and hopeful and positive. She stayed that way with our kids and we just did the best we could to celebrate moving into our home and to celebrate the little wins and to continue to do fun things with our kids. We went in and got scans and nothing showed up and so then it turned into this waiting game of where is it going to come back, what's it going to be and we still had this little bit of hope of maybe the blood test was just a fluke, maybe her body can still, you know, get on top of it. We then went in for another scan and it was back. And we went into the doctor and for some reason before we knew, they hadn't told us anything showed up on the scan, but both me and Maddie just felt heavy and scared. And we went in and the doctor sat down and I know it's his job and he has to deal with it a lot. So this isn't a shot at him, but it was just You've had your cancer come back as peritoneal carcinomatosis, which is a terminal diagnosis. And you have six months to a year to live, maybe 
a little more, maybe a little less. If you do chemo, it might extend that a little bit, but you know, it might not. And both of us are just like, what do you mean? You know, this, there's, there's gotta be something we can do. And he just looked at us and said, I know it sucks, but it's what it is. So we went out to the car and we screamed and we cried and we swore and we just processed. After a couple of minutes that we looked at each other and we both just said, no, like we're gonna find a way to beat this. We're gonna find a way to overcome it. And we both just felt like there had to be a solution. So we went home and we just started making calls. We called every connection, every doctor. I reached out to any YouTuber that I thought might have connections. We looked into all of the natural remedies. We completely changed Maddie's diet, which it already was extreme because we wanted to do everything we could, but we, we did so much research. We put so much time and energy and thought into everything from her diet to all of the different options. There was a surgery that some people could do that could extend life maybe a year or two if she could get approved for the surgery. That was where we had started. We then found an exploratory treatment that was an immunotherapy. They had studied it at Baylor and over the last couple of years, they've seen lots of positive things with cancer being able to essentially give you a form of an immunization to help your body recognize the cancer and try and fight it because with a peritoneal carcinomatosis um, diagnosis, it just ends up everywhere in your peritoneal cavity and it just kind of grows and starts shutting down organs everywhere. And so finding that, we just had talked to so many doctors and everything was bleak but we really felt like that had potential to help her body recognize it because it had worked for other people. And it was so early on that they weren't doing any trials in the United States for her specific cancer. They were doing trials for other tumor-based cancers. And we had just seen, you know, it looked like this immunotherapy or these immunotherapy treatments and helping your body recognize the cancer cells seemed like the best option and we really just didn't have any other options. And so I was able to connect with the team and we put in so much research and we, we called and connect with so many people. And the way that we found this is Ryan Pineda was incredible at just reaching out to every connection he had, as were a lot of my other friends. But he linked us up with Gary Brecka, who linked us up with this team. And the tricky part was the FDA trials were still going on here in the United States, but the team that they had a connection with was in Mexico where they can do these exploratory treatments. And we did a lot of research on that team. We felt so good about things. And we talked to multiple other people that had gone and done this immunotherapy um, with, with the T cell and helping your body recognize these cancer cells and we just felt like, hey, this is, this is our shot. We had so many moments along the way. And so we pushed hard, we got in, and within weeks, we were scheduled to go and, and receive this treatment. So in that time, Maddie was more aware of the pain of the cancer. She started getting more and more tinges all over. She was feeling lots of weird things. Her bowels were being weird and already we were we were just dealing with lots of weird symptoms in just weeks from the diagnosis and so we got on a plane and we went out to mexico and our first night there the cancer had just grown so quickly in such a short period of time that it had closed down on our ureter and so here we are we're with my mom our two kids we're out in mexico we've got a good team of doctors that we feel confident in but we hadn't even met up with this team yet and it closed down on your, her ureter. And so it was four in the morning, she wakes up in agonizing pain and we left in the middle of the night. We went to the emergency room in Mexico. We were able to connect with our doctors there that we had put in time and they connected with the doctors they felt the most comfortable with us working with. But then we had to make a lot of really scary calls. I mean, Maddie was in agonizing pain, puking, just worst pain ever and we're doing this emergency surgery in Mexico to have them put a stent in to open up her ureter so that the cancer didn't kill her. 
And so already just weeks in, we felt like, you know, we're just having to find solutions to, to keep her alive. The surgery went well. We connected with incredible doctors there. We definitely, after going through, you know, the language barrier and everything else with an emergency room in Mexico, um, it was a very traumatic, hard, scary, horrible experience. And after you get a stent put in, you still deal with horrible pain. And so from this point forward, just a couple weeks in, Maddie had a stent that every day gave her pain. But again, we got our heads on straight and we just felt like we'd found the right place. And so we started the treatment and the beginning of the treatment was them taking the cells they needed from her body so that they could train them before weeks later putting them back in. And so we flew home and after working with their team, we made the decision that once they'd gotten these healthy cells and they were gonna put them in, even though chemo is very detrimental to your immune system, we decided we would do chemo to see if that could buy us more time while going through this treatment. And that was a really hard decision for us because we knew her immune system would be stronger without chemo but we also felt like the cancer was being so aggressive that we had to stop it from going and shutting other things down. The other thing that was really hard is because the cancer was growing, she started getting lots of inflammation and lots of fluid in her peritoneal cavity. And so we noticed dramatic growth to where, you know, she looked pregnant and then it would get to the point where she was looking eight, nine months pregnant with this fluid. And so we were having to go in every couple days to get the fluid drained. During this time, we're getting fluid drained. We're going back and forth to Mexico to receive these immunizations in hopes of helping her body recognize the cancer. We are trying to see if she can get approved for the surgery, but they felt like with how aggressive the cancer was, they wouldn't be able to do the surgery because um, the cancer would come back before she could even recover. Like it wouldn't, it would give no quality of life and just put her through misery. And so we were doing chemo, which again has its own side effects, but we did feel like that would slow down some of the inflammation and some of the growth. And she battled this way for months. We originally knew the cancer was coming back in October and had her diagnosis in December. And then for January, February, March, April, and May, she just fought all of these symptoms while doing chemo, while going out to Mexico for these treatments and while trying to show up in the best way that she could for her kids. I don't wanna go into all of the symptoms, but I do just wanna share just the magnitude of how much she had to deal with from more skin rashes because of chemo and because of procedures, horrible bowel issues, um, horrible pain in her belly, horrible skin symptoms from the chemotherapy and so many other random things where every day we were trying to adjust drugs, we were trying to deal with either constipation or diarrhea or one of the different symptoms that kept coming, we were worried about the cancer closing on her other ureter. We were worried about bowel obstruction from it closing down on her bowels. We were worried about all of these different things and just constantly in a state of connecting with our doctors and finding solutions for the pain of that day. We were going in and getting all the fluid drained off of her belly, got to the point where it was every three days that we were going in and dealing with that. And she just suffered so much. And through that whole process, just stayed so hopeful and positive and present with me and the kids. I looked back a lot on if we shouldn't have tried all the treatment, if we shouldn't have put her through that. But I don't think there's any of those decisions that I regret or that she regretted because it kept us in a present hopeful state and it kept her going and we always had this sense that maybe we could beat it somehow. We still took time to take or to have some of the harder conversations of what if we don't beat it? And even though going to Mexico seemed like a difficult thing, it ended up being a massive blessing because I don't think we would have chosen to do anything with just the two of us. 
with our kids because we did want to give them as much time with her as possible. But I'm also so grateful for the time that me and her got together. As I've looked at how she handled the battle, and then at the end when we were told, look, she has days, it's closed down on her bowels, they're not working anymore. And Maddie finally made the shift of, this is it, I'm not gonna be here. She just went from so hopeful to so at peace to where she had her things that were important for me and the kids to know. She wanted us to know that she wanted us to be happy. She wanted us to live life and be present and make the most of it. And she talked to the kids in all the ways that they could recognize her throughout their life. And she just went from hopeful and positive to this must just be what's going to happen and here's what you need to do to still live life. And I wanted to share all of this, one, because she was exceptional in every way through this process. And I want people to know that, but also she just did all of the things to set me and the kids up for the best life possible. And we really had the extraordinary opportunity to watch her do something so extremely incredible at such a young age to fight this in such a strong way. We had so many doctors and nurses come and just say they'd never seen anyone like her in the way that she stayed happy even to the last days. <laughs> she stayed grateful and kind and they just hadn't seen people with a terminal diagnosis hold to that through the whole process. Maddie ended up passing away on May 24th and before she passed, she told the doctor she wanted to go back to her house, spend a couple of days with friends and family. And that's what she did. We all had great conversations with her. She was at home for two days and then she passed. And my life fell apart and still is very much a mess. But I gave myself a couple of weeks of just being on the brink of not wanting to be here, but knowing that I needed to show up for my kids. The one thing that Maddie told me that really stuck is I just said, how do I do this without you? And she said, live it for the kids. And before you know it, you'll be living it for you again. It's now a couple of weeks out from four months since Maddie passed. And I just feel like I wanna share her story and her legacy. And I wanna find a way to not just show up for my kids, which has been so hard to watch them without their mom, but also so extraordinary in the way that they've pushed forward and recognize her every day. But I also just know that Maddie wants us to be happy. She wants us to push forward. She wants us to live life. And part of that for me is making videos and I enjoy it and she enjoyed it and she was pushing me all through of you should still be doing videos i know you love it and i didn't want to do it while we were going through everything with her but i know she knew how much i enjoy this and would want me to find a way to do the things that i love and do the things that the kids love and so that's why i decided to make this video is i feel like her story needs to be shared and i feel like i need to share it before i can start and making the kind of content I was making before that makes me happy. And so, I don't know, I finished this story and I just feel like nothing will do the battle she went through justice, but this is my best effort to at least help you understand a little bit the extraordinary nature of Maddie and the way that she took it on with hope and positivity and grace. For those of you that have to fight the horrible beast of cancer, I think the one thing I want you to know and that Maddie would want you to know is just stay present. Whether it's cancer or anything else, the most important thing is the minute or the second you're living right now and things are scary, but 
when you worry about the worst case scenario, you end up living it twice. And Maddie was such an incredible example of living now and making the most of the time that she had and staying positive and hopeful and faithful because the alternative is so much worse. And so I don't regret the fight we put. She gave it everything. And I'm so grateful that I got to watch her go through this extraordinary battle firsthand. I know she knows, but I love her so much and I'm so grateful for her example. And I hope that other people can get strength from her and her story and the way that she lived because it was exceptional. And I hope it also helps put things into perspective for those of you that are healthy and that maybe aren't dealing with this because I think everyone in life at some point is going to have to deal with these hard things, some people sooner than others, but just be grateful because life is short and you gotta live it. And I hope that perspective comes because there are lots of times in my life where I haven't had it, that I wish I had the perspective I had now back then. And that's why I feel such a weight to show up for my kids and show up in life with this perspective and help others to, to understand it so they make the most of the time they've got. And I think that's all I've got for this video, but I'm hoping to work back into more videos, but I also hope people will understand that for a while, for me and my grief process, I just wanna talk about Maddie. And sometimes I feel dumb that it's all I wanna talk about and all I wanna put out there and I worry about the perception of people, but talking about her and sharing her legacy and her battle is what makes me happy and what helps me push forward right now. And so that's what I'm gonna do.